Nice. Woo! Woo! Hello, and welcome to the Inner Game of Smash. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Mr. Tuesday, and I'm joined today by Swivel. Hello. Um, our, our very be very own behind-the-scenes manager, producer type person, wow. um, Hapless Hero. Hello, guys. I'm in front of the curtain today. That's the magical reveal. The man in front of the curtain. <laughs> I don't think that was allowed. Doesn't that, like, destroy the magic? I know, this is like breaking the fourth wall shit or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Okay, and then we have Bonk Cushy. Hi. Hello. Off of a hot tournament streak, right? You've gotten like two fifths in a row. Pretty yeah, dude. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. New England's very own Pikachu. Nice. He actually infected my, my Skype profile picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, have you guys ever picture? Have you guys ever teamed? Okay. We actually... uh... Wait, have we? No, we haven't, because uh, we're always teaming with Adria, the other Peach. Ah, the other Peach. Yeah, yeah but uh, Peach Pikachu makes such a good team, so... Yeah, it's super good. I have the picture saved. But isn't uh, uh, Pikachu and Jigglypuff the best team? So it's like all the power of Fox Jigglypuff, but the this Fox is... can't die because they're Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I said uh, I said it was like a good team. I didn't say it was the best team. <laughs> I actually it's... believed it was the best team, <laughs> but then I was wrong because New England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today, on our itinerary, we have five super cool topics lined up for you, and they are in order. Super syllabant. Scrubs, scrubs, salts, stats, summit, and shine. We didn't do this on purpose, but it yes, worked out that way. No, we totally I, I did it on purpose. <laughs> we, did every, we do everything on this show on purpose. Totally. The Illuminati, anytime anything crazy happens, it's probably Avery working behind the scenes. Oh no, you revealed it. No, you're not supposed to say that. This is what happens when you come out on camera. Uh, alright, well, alright. It's an open secret now. Okay, so for the first topic, um, I've been thinking, when you meet a new player, you're like, hey, this guy has potential, he might be really good. Right? Like, that may be what your impression. Or you might be like, uh, this guy's probably not gonna be that good. Right? And you, like, kind of get that feeling. But you no know, one ever, you can't really quantify it, right? You can't be like, this guy's gonna be 40th in New England in a year and, like, 7th in two years or something like that. But you can tell, like, they're gonna be pretty good and you get that feeling. Um, what is it that makes you feel that someone's gonna become really good? Or maybe what is it that makes you think that they're not gonna be so good? So, I'm gonna just jump in. Yeah. Um, I went to the workshop for me, I think, <laughs> and I had to play some, like, random Falco, and then, like, I'm Pikachu, and I know they have no idea what I'm doing, but they took the first game from me, and I was, like, super sweating, and I, like, threw them off the stage eight times later, and then, like, I won the set, and, um, afterwards, I talked to Mafia, and he was just like, yo, is that the Falco kid you were playing? And I'm like, yeah, dude. You should go talk to him. What was his tag? I was like, oh, uh, I think it was PJ. And then, um, <laughs> Uh, I think that was like a year and a half ago now or something. Wow. And then I was just like, oh yeah, this guy's probably gonna be good. Wow. Wait, he's that he's that old in the scene already? I think. Oh my god. I think it was a while ago. Maybe. But um, Shut at up. the time I also thought he was like my age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, PJ the legend. Literally came out of nowhere. Wow. Yeah, that's all I really have to say. <laughs> so, so Dan, when you played him, what when you played against him, what made you think this guy's gonna be good? Um, other than the fact that he took the first game for me, I don't know. He pushed a lot of buttons, and that typically impresses me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that means that you know, like, I mean, that, that means they're like playing stuff. Because like, if you're playing someone and they're like not pressing any buttons at all, then it's just like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, I can understand if they don't get like some of the concepts, like they don't pick some of the concepts, but yeah. Can hit the buttons and they don't hit the buttons and it's like all right well <laughs> i mean to be fair that's, that's one like really big sign i mean i think we can all yeah. agree on that i mean to be fair that's why they call it like the falco master right it's like <laughs> it's like someone who can push buttons and yeah. plays falco and then and sometimes they just got lucky and got the read four times even though it was really just like luck but and then they look amazing <laughs> tj has never beaten squibble before uh oh yeah Wait, I wasn't even trying to be, like, self-defensive. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, all, all the times PJ beat me were definitely flukes. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, that thing you just, just described, uh, Bonk, 
That's the exact opposite that impresses me in a new player. If they press like a lot of buttons really fast, I'm like, oh no, not another one of these guys. Another Falcon <laughs> Master. Like, sometimes they end up being amazing, you can tell. But like the guys who just press a lot of buttons, and maybe I'm biased because I play Peach, but I just like flick down and then they're dead. Um, I'm always more impressed when they have like the good spacing down and like they know how to hit you without getting hit. Mm. Um, that's always the thing that impresses me, uh, first of all. Uh, that's fair, but I like never see that. Oh, I see. Maybe it's because of the Pika perspective, because I'm like always running at them. Yeah. But... <laughs> I guess yeah. yeah, with rush down, you don't really give your 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 like newer opponents a chance to space around you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually a really good thing, because like I think that if I'm like playing really offensive and in their face, and that means to overcome that, they have to like, hit more buttons and make me get out of their face. Right. Not really in like a defensive style, but like if they're also playing an offensive style. And I guess I could see the offensive style more because they're hitting more buttons, and that's kind of like what I'm doing. Oh, and then you're testing their like, out-of-shield options right. and crouch-cancel skills, and it's like different skills you're looking at. Right. So, so Bonk, did you, just conf did you just confirm yeah. us to us on stream that you're actually a bigger button pusher than PJ? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back throw is just like a direction. That's not even a button. <laughs> so, and Z is like so soft, like so. Uh, well, well, yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, I guess I'm kind of like I move around a lot too. Uh, I think about like inputting like movement as like buttons as well, kind of, because I don't really think of it like too much of like spacing. I guess I, just, I think of it like kind of like all right, well, I'm moving really fast, you know. And I mean, I'm like putting in more input. It's still an input. Kind of think of it like that. You just have to think about how you're going to use it. So, so, Bonk, you've named the time when you've been kind of most impressed by someone you've never seen before and was like, whoa, this guy has mad potential. Have you ever had a time when you played a guy and you're like, man, this guy is just never going to... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Cry. Before we get to that story, can I share my PJ story? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever shared this, like, to, well, to this day. Well, not really shared. Like, it wasn't that interesting at the time, but, like, I think I played PJ at one of maybe his first Mass Madnesses or something, and it was in pools. I don't know. It was a long time ago. Um, and anyway, so the first the first game, it was in pools, like, so maybe he didn't really care, but, like, the first game, he picked Falcon, and I just kind of, like, did the Peach thing where you just throw him off stage and you hit A, and I was just like, what is he doing? And then I picked, and then he picked Falco. And then I was like, oh, okay, all right. He, I guess he knows kind of what he's doing. But I don't know. I think at that moment, I, I had in my mind, I was like, I had this mental model of him. I was like, I'm not sure what this guy is trying to do. Therefore, like, I'm not sure, like, where he's going to be, you know, in a certain amount of time. Anyway, but I guess time proved that he's not a total scrub. So that's good. I mean, some people would disagree, but, you know. <laughs> our, the good friend of the show... But, uh, yeah, so, so um, everyone has met those people that they're like, oh, this guy's going to be good, um, or this guy might, might not be so good. So, like, what's your, what's your mental image of, like, the perfect scrub of, like, <laughs> oh, man, these are all just terrible qualities that are going to take you uh, nowhere? Because we all have those in ourselves a little bit. So it's, it, it could be a good um, to, like, identify it and, and throw it out there. Um, Especially have, like, a model of someone. Yeah. So I'm going to preface this with I think that anyone can be good because I used to be like really bad and I think that a lot of what I think about melee is like how it works is like so I have a lot of faith in myself that I can like beat most people nowadays and if I have that faith in myself I don't see why I can't have that faith in other people because we're all just kind of people we're all just kind of doing it so I mean I, I think I came far in the time that I've been playing so I don't see why other people come far right. but the perfect scrub he has a three feedback loop where he asks you for advice you give him advice and then he has a rebuttal for the advice that you give him oh my mm. god <laughs> you're so right that's um, the worst yeah Our, so you you yeah. tell them that you like you prevented something or you did something and that beat them but they have their own explanation that is superior to yours despite <laughs> the fact that they asked for your advice mm -hmm. yeah or they um cut you off mid-explanation with, okay, sounds good, and leave. Mm -hmm. It's like... <laughs> it's like, like I, I leave. Yeah, it's like for a moment, 
they decide that I want to get better and then it disappears like in a second. I, to I totally feel like I've done that like you know when I was when we I was, all have a little oh bit. my god I, I totally did <laughs> yeah. that like when I was first like trying to learn the game I was just like but I don't need tech skill and I don't need a space and and those things I just <laughs> I was wrong. Like, on some level, the root of all scrubbiness is being too salty to accept good advice, mm. right? Like, if you're, none of us are Zen Buddhist masters, right? We can't just be like, oh, that's right, and yeah. then just implement to our play immediately. And some of us can, and that's why they became really ridiculously good overnight. But I think for most humans, it's like, you don't want to accept it. And some people right. can't, and that's, those are the people that are like, Hey, um, what did I that ask you after the, the set? What did I do wrong? Can you give me any tips? This is what I thought I did. Maybe that's not right. And they actually accept the advice wholeheartedly. I think that's the anti-scrub, in a way. Mm -hmm. But those guys aren't salty about their losses. They're just looking to get better. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that there's a big distinction that needs to be made because I feel like they're the people that do the three, uh, the three feedback loop, but they do want to get better. They just don't know that they're doing it. Right. And it, like, yeah. that's like the next level, and that kind of encompasses what I think of the perfect scrub, but I do think the perfect scrub can realize what he is doing, and then start kind of fixing it and going along, and getting better at the whole process. Yeah. I, I personally feel like, so, I mean, it's interesting because, like, I, I kind of, um, I kind of, like, went really hard, like, thought I was going really hard with competing for a while, and then I kind of, like, stopped, you know, entering for a while, and, like, you know, now I'm more on the logistical side of things, right? But, like, I've definitely sat back to think a lot about, like, you know, what was I doing at that time? Like, what are other people doing now? And one thing I've realized for sure is that I think as I got better and so on, like, the thing that I changed was, like, shortening that amount of time where after, the, like, that loss, I'm just like, man, like, I don't want to hear anything this guy has to say. I just, I just lost. You know, like, if you can shorten that time to, to something within, like, I don't know enough to, like short enough that you can you can get over it so you can be like hey like let's talk about you know what what went well what went wrong during that set or whatever like you can actually learn start to learn from your losses rather than just be salty about them at least I think it's helpful. So I'm gonna say something that might be a little unusual. Um, I think that there's definitely a thing as not being salty enough uh, because we all play melee and we all get good at melee because we all want to win. We all like winning and hate losing, right? I think that's true for every melee player. We all want to kind of beat our opponents yeah. and not get beaten. Otherwise, you don't get good at melee, you go play a different game. Like, I don't know. Mario settlers. Or something. Yeah, Settlers. <laughs> something fun. Something fun for the whole family. Melee is not fun for the whole family. I hate Settlers. Melee, melee is about one person beating another person. And like, I met this player at uh, my school not too long ago. Um, who had like great fundamentals. Um, when I watched him move, he moved really smooth. He plays, uh, um, I, I probably shouldn't name his character in case he ever listens to the show. <laughs> um, but he plays uh, um, like in a really smooth style, like the PP style, you know, just the hang back, like try and grab them out of their unsafeness. But at the same time, I didn't sense any killer instinct, you know? I didn't sense the, the will to kind of beat me down that pretty much every melee player has on some level is the, the kind of desire to beat their opponent really hard. And when we think of scrubbiness, <laughs> when we think of the, the scrub factor, we think of what wants to win too much to let themselves actually get better. Um, like doesn't want to accept the fact that they might um, have room for improvement. But this guy just, he was like a, like a live and let live kind of guy. He was just so, so chill about it that mm. in a way it was like, it's not what you think about when you think about scrubbiness, but it definitely held him back from becoming, uh, improving as fast as he, uh, he could if he, say, maybe got a little bit salty and maybe really wanted to win. Hmm. Well, it's definitely hard. It's like, I think most people have a pretty good attitude if you sit down with them, but then, like, they can get emotionally. <laughs> They, their emotions carry their mind away and they can't actually seriously follow what they know they have to do. Because it's not, it's not too complicated to understand that you have to learn to get better. Like, most people can figure that one out. But then it's actually doing it when you just lost and you're mad and now your emotions are clogging you and now your, your IQ drops 40 <laughs> points and who knows what's going on. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if salt is maybe the right word, but Howard, I think what you're getting at is like every competitive, any any kind of competitive gamer, what be you know, be it like a sport or like a fighting game or whatever. Like, I think there has to be the drive to win. Like, I don't know that salt maybe necessarily is like the best motivator for like driving you to get better, but that's obviously like nobody really knows the answer. Like, what makes you better the most? efficiently or whatever but like i don't know like I, I feel like the drive to compete and the drive to win are maybe a little distinct from salt right like salt, salt sort of to me carries that that feeling of like you know like resentment or so, something of like i don't know a little more negative i'm not sure um, i feel like i totally agree with avery because i feel like i used to be in the like really really like salty camp and i felt like that was kind of like what my drive was and like I don't think salt is really an embodiment of wanting to win, if that makes sense. I feel mm. like you can want to win, lose, and be okay with losing, but not be content. I always try to like separate the idea of happiness and contentment. You can be happy, but you cannot be content with where you are. So you can keep working on the melee that you're trying to play, but that doesn't necessarily mean that when you lose you should feel like, oh, I gotta like bring it out. And at the same time, I guess if you're playing someone and you beat them and then they're not salty about what they lost they might not have the drive to watch the mod to get better but if they're already in the process of playing a lot and trying to learn the game then there doesn't necessarily have to be salt there you know so so i guess like bach i guess kind of to extend on that like you're saying maybe like the salt is almost like the deterrent from losing whereas like you could also have a different drive that like compels you to win yeah yeah and that's love of the game hmm so pure that is, yeah that's a good word for it it's very idealistic yeah it's um, very very idealistic it's as if we don't have emotions which is right. why it's yeah. not applicable in the right. real world but that's like the conceptual right no i hate losing man yeah, i hate losing. <laughs> i hate it i hate it yeah. Fuck shit. It's the worst. yeah no it's true losing well, just always be a winner. Just always be better than everyone else. Yeah. Well, if you lose while trolling, is it really losing? Then it's like you both oh, that's win. The biggest scrub trap. Oh my god. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing where they stop <laughs> trying to oh my god. And start getting beaten. <laughs> oh, I, so so I I have my vision of the perfect scrub. It's okay because I didn't try. <laughs> yeah. It does exactly that, right? Like the moment they start. Um, the game doesn't go according to plan, they don't get their perfect dark combo off, they don't- they, they didn't get the thing that they practiced in the lab, the triple shine to style on you and to shine, <laughs> shine all over the platforms uh, because they just killed you because they're so good, they're so much better than you. And the moment it doesn't go according to plan, they get so angry and they like, oh what is- they say this game's dumb, they start vocalizing it and then they start yeah. um, switching characters and like, oh I don't- don't even care anyways, I don't want to be a good player anyways, and god, that's the worst. And I'm sure everyone knows someone like that. Pretty sure I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just describing the other thing. Okay, maybe I should stop. I didn't realize how bad that was. That seems really bad now that you explained the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Theo, can you talk about, like, what do you find yourself doing when you're in that situation? Well, it's true. Like, I did practice the stupid wave shine across the whole stage and this amazing a million combo, but, um... Then I mess up one pixel and then I die and the game's dumb. Uh. <laughs> but but I mean like but do you feel like but do you feel like it's gonna like tilt you and like cost you a set and your like entire mentality I mean, like if I am I if I focus beforehand on remaining calm and just enjoying the game I think I can control it and that that's important because yeah. it's like all these one frame links are like basically impossible to be consistent anyway because of the way melee pulling works right and just like how hard these things are. Like, you're not going to hit it every time. So you just have to accept <laughs> that. But that's really hard. So yeah. I, I think, I don't know, for me at least, I have to mentally, like, prepare myself beforehand and put myself in, like, a state of calm happiness where I try hard. It's hard to explain. I don't usually do that unless it's, like, a tournament set. So then I'll just say things because it helps my ego feel better. <laughs> like, this game's dumb. Instead of admitting, oh, man, my... Micro mistake got me killed because yeah. I was bad. <laughs> I think it's really important when you fall into the scrub trap. Uh, everyone does, by the way, because I think falling into scrub traps is really linked to wanting to win, right? 
I think that they are kind of one and the same. So um, it can very much be like a trap that you fall into. It's really important to realize that you fall into the yeah. trap and not get stuck there for the rest of your life. And I mean, some people, I, I like to think they move past it, but um, I've known some people for a couple of years that may or may not have gotten past that. <laughs> um, the answer is they, they, they didn't. <laughs> wow. But, yeah. Um, I think as long as you're able to recognize it and try and fix it in the future, it's not so bad. And you don't get stuck. Right. And to all of our salty, scrubby friends out there listening to the podcast right now, just, um, you can fix it, dude. Like, it's not like, it's not like a characteristic right. to your person. It's just some, like, thing that you're not really working on or not really noticing, you know? Yeah, I, I, you know, I talk to a lot of people about, like, who, I think I talk to a fair number of people who are either new to, like, competitive endeavors or like new to the, the melee or whatever like and one of the things that i have to explain a lot is like wanting to go out there and like put a lot of losses in right you know it's like n then then people are like oh no i don't want to go to a tournament just to like have a bunch of losses and like waste five bucks or ten bucks on like you know a couple l's oh and two you know it's like but i'm like dude but like how else are you going to get the experience of going oh and two so that you don't go into next time right like it's like one of those things Explaining that so is hard. Cute. It's so cute when new players are afraid of tournaments, of yeah. like losing a tournament, right? Because, like, I've probably lost a, literally a million games at this point in my lifetime, <laughs> right? Probably like, a literally million. Literally a million. And that's probably true for most of you guys out there, too. Like, just so many games. And it's just, <sighs> it sucks. But yeah. it's, it's part of it, right? It's just melee. Yeah. Yeah, just, like, go, go, and, lo go and lose and so that you can understand, like, what to do when you lose because that's not something that people are kind of like innately able to do like i don't think people are innately able to take failures and setbacks and like do something constructive i mean if you are then okay you're like you're a superhuman or something and that's great you're, you're gonna learn how to be good at everything but i don't know like i i definitely feel like i had a lot of that learning to do too like i still do so i don't know everyone does i bet yeah, well, Avery, you're pretty new to competitive gaming in general, right? Like, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. 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 So it can be can be a lot of a lot of mental blocks to yeah. kind of overcome, especially if you hate losing. Yeah. yeah, I definitely don't like losing, but like, yeah, you're <laughs> right. Like, melee was one of the, I guess, one of the first things I really like tried to get better at. You know, that like wasn't, I guess, like forced on you, like academics or you know, one of those types of things, right? Like, and and having to choose to accept your losses and like do a, you know it was it was, it was a, a lot of like mental mm -hmm. self-searching i guess I, of course it's something i still do even though i guess i'm not actively competing but like you know i still want to get better at games and stuff like that's what i like about them is is the that aspect now i think but yeah so, well, if you had to yeah, i guess you're kind of the king of new england smash club at this moment or like the head or whatever whatever you want to call it the deity um, if you had to give a piece of advice to every newcomer that comes into your Smash Club next year, and um, so that they automatically internalize it, no effort involved, you just tell them it and then they do it, um, mm -hmm. what would it be like to, to kind of kickstart their improvement, to prevent them from being on the scrub path? And 12 easy the, steps. The player? Uh, I would just read David Serlin's Playing to Win. Mm. It's like, takes like 30 minutes, it's not that long, actually it'd probably take longer. It's like a half book. So it'll take like six hours, but it's pretty good, um, and it explains everything. It's just don't have a scrubby mindset. Even just like the introductory article on like don't be a scrub is probably good enough. But yeah, that just, that, uh... that first page, that first like chapter or whatever is like amazing. I, I yeah, yeah, I recommend that definitely. Yeah, that's, that's real good. That's what I learned. That's how I learned about it. I, like when I was like fifteen or something, I wound up reading that article. <laughs> Because I was mad that I kept losing at TF2. And then I read it, and I kept losing, but I was a bit less scrubby about it. <laughs> less edgy than reading The Prince. Uh, that was back in the days when people used to like pull knives on, knives on each other Ugh. after they got tick thrown, right? Like, those were the, the uh, bad old days of like, like, so a scrub, Being a scrub was like serious business back then. Mm. Now yeah. people just laugh at you for being a scrub. Yeah. Laugh at your. Your 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 salty Facebook posts and Reddit and Twitter, yeah. Well, now you can at least take the hipster route. We're saying the competitive community is too cutthroat. So by not playing to win, you're playing the game 
in its true form, and you're a true gamer, and um, you're better than everyone. Do people so actually least, say that? I feel like Melee is old Just, enough that that doesn't happen anymore. For some I mean, that's like, the, right, that's like the super scubby argument is like, no. oh, you guys aren't playing the real, real game. You're just using exploits and unfair, cheap strategies. But that's, um, I mean, that that there's like a way to do it where now you say people are playing to, you understand the playing to win argument and try and make it like you're even above that. So it's not like you're not aware of it, but you're trying to be above it and say that you're playing it, uh, right. You're playing it your way, even though you know how to play the win, and that it's better that way. I've never met anyone who didn't say that. I've heard that argument a lot, by the way. And I've never heard anyone who didn't say it right after losing a game that they really liked to win. <laughs> oh, that, like, that, 100% that. of the time, right? We've all heard it. And it's always like, I, you, you just try hearts. <laughs> <laughs> try hearts the best insult, because it, it implies that you're, like, you're better at life, but you just don't apply yourself. So yeah. you could win. Yeah. Oh. It tilts me. <laughs> uh oh. Now we know how to do it. Do it to Bonk next time. <laughs> Frankly, it's very easy to tilt me. Oh, That's my new strat. I get back thrown and yell try hard, and then I'll get a <laughs> <No. up>. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you practiced that game and did on me. Oh my god. Uh, there, there's actually. <laughs> Oh my god, there's actually, you know, it's funny because y you bring that up and, like, there's been times where if I play, like, actually, yeah, like, I went on this business trip with um, three of my coworkers, and, you know, because being the nerd that I am, I brought Dolphin and, you know, an, an adapter and two GameCube controllers and stuff, and so I was like, huh? The only way to travel. Oh, yeah, yeah, obviously. No, and then I brought it out and I was like, hey, who wants to play Melee? And they were like, what? <laughs> Anyway, so I play this guy, and he, like, picks Roy, and I'm like, okay, you know, I, I, like, we were playing for a while, then he picks Roy, and then I chain throw him on FD, and then he's like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> and I was like, I felt bad at that moment. I was just like, man, I practiced this, like, thing that, like, destroys noobs, and here I am doing it to someone. I don't know. I have, I have a story to share that I don't think I should share, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Yay! The best kind! And I was playing at a New Hampshire tournament. And it was open entry, so they like put out flyers for like little kids to come. So there were I was playing at a setup with like this this eight year old kid and uh -oh. his little brother, like maybe six, five or six or something like that. And he picks the spacey, um, and I, I, I just take him. Uh, we ran into FD, and I just start chain grabbing him. <laughs> and like Aro, um, the peach player Aro walks up to me and is like, Howard, what are you doing? <laughs> like, dude, he's not DIing. It's just like, <laughs> did you take our box? Yeah, no, I, I'm a tryhard through and through. Oh. I didn't even think anything about it. Um, but yeah. Okay, uh, I guess that picks a little bit off topic, so <laughs> on to our next one. Game grabbing um, eight year olds. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, so, uh, Summit's been finalized, and one of us has made it in. Uh -oh. Yay! Woo! Yay. I did it. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> um, so, I'm actually really hyped for this. Yeah. yeah. Beach party? I'm just gonna beach party the whole time. Yeah, just bring your swimsuit, just hang out. Don't, don't yeah. even book so Probably forfeit out of the tournament just to beach party longer. <laughs> yeah. No, Theo, we want to see you play, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, so, Scoble, you qualified on points. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have this handy dandy list right Ooh, here. Read it out, read um, it out. So, so, from top to bottom, I'm gonna read the state qualifiers first. Because uh, they are like the best, right? So, um, from uh... <laughs> the best in their state. Yeah, the best in their state. That still doesn't help you. I mean, um, people who've got the most points in their state. Yes, the best at gaming the rip circuit system. Yes. Okay. So from Connecticut, from uh, qualified um, on on by state legislation or whatever you want to call it by state. <laughs> Uh, okay, so if the two slots go to Slox and Swiftface, which I think surprised absolutely nobody. And um, from Massachusetts was Mafia and Crush, also surprising nobody. Crush with a ridiculously high points per tournament score, by the way, the highest in the entire circuit at 93. Wow. Um, 93, yeah, and to, like, put, to put into perspective, like, what's the next highest? I think that's next? averaging first at like under 64 person tournaments. Yeah, basically, <laughs> you can't go to 32 person tournaments if you want that score. You're not allowed. 
you have to win 64 or higher. So, yeah. Yeah, that's absurd. Uh, Mafia was second at 73. Mm. And also very, very, very high. Yeah. Uh, Captain Crunch from Maine. Uh, New Hampshire's representative, Infinite Numbers. Uh, Joy Boy from that Rhode Island state, Rhode Island. <laughs> and and Seabase from Vermont. And so Solid. that's the eight representatives from states. They will be um, your senators, if you will. And for um, uh, for points from top to bottom was the Joe Stone with the most. Uh, Mr. Lemon, who actually took the most uh, took the title for most tournaments attended at a whopping forty six tournaments. Wow! Wow! That's, God, that's, that's just the ones. So shout outs to Lemon and that grind. Yeah. Um, Claps in third. Sora in fourth. Dudu Sai in fifth. Our very own Skibble in sixth. Matt Dot Zav in seventh. And barely edging out for the last spot was S two B from Connecticut. And uh, it's actually really funny. Um, Thorne had a chance to, to take it, but he got seventh instead of fifth at the very last circuit event at Mass Madness. So S2B <laughs> will be uh, the eighth uh, point qualifier at the summit. Wow. The, so, the artist we, formerly known as Bluntmaster, right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. He's, I think he's still in, chat, in our chat right now as Bluntmaster. Hello. <laughs> but oh. uh, who's going to win the summit? Ooh. Me. Good uh, job winning the summit. <laughs> well, numbers might do pound and wobble everyone and be amazing. Or I think wait, is Zoso going? I think Zoso uh Slox, I forgot he exists. So Slox is definitely the favorite because he just has the overall best results at beating everyone in New England. Unless he yeah. goes Samus. But you probably won't do that with Evo tickets on the line. Right. So, yeah, I think Slox is going to do it. But Crush has been putting in a lot of work recently and numbers. And, um, you know, those two have been working really hard recently. So maybe they'll do something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's buzz recently that Crush may have surpassed Slox. Um, I've mm. heard that opinion from a number of people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, actually know their head to head recently, so I have no idea. Is that is that would you say that's because of like out of region performance like Crush going out to Dreamhack and a couple others? Yeah, I would say yeah, that. Crush going thirteenth at Dreamhack was crazy. Yeah. Maybe, uh, Reddit pound. That's a very good win. Yeah. And nice. of course he's been Ken recently, who notoriously bodied Slocks over and over while Slocks in California. So that's oh kind really kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so that I'm I'm excited to see the summit. Um, I will be there along with the rest of the Inner Game Smash members who are now competing to commentate. So that will be a good time. Yeah. Uh, I, I am holding down Twitch chat. Yeah. Yeah. Got it, got it. <laughs> Bring down that band hammer on all those. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll see you there, Bunk. You know, I'll be uh, closing that curtain again. <laughs> Um, actually, the one thing I'm really looking forward to in the summit is all the other things we're going to do. Uh, like beach parties. I was, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say the Resistance, which is my preferred version of Mafia, which is a, kind of a, a, a Beyond the Summit classic, the, the Mafia games. But anyways. Yeah, see, see, if we did Mafia, it would be too obvious that we're ripping off the summit, right? Oh, no, it's not ripping like, off at hey, all. Guys, come on. So we have our own slightly different game, so it's like totally yeah. not ripping off at all. And we could shout yeah. out indie board game devs. Those guys are cool. Yeah. They're the best. Or we could play Coup, or we could play Werewolf. Uh, play well, I don't think we can play Hitler, Coup with this many people. Apples to Apples. No. It's the, it's the newest, um, uh, everyone's in a circle guessing who's who. No, Theo, That's I don't want to play Apples to Apples because I don't... We could I play don't... Truth or Dare. We could play Spin the Bottle. Oh my god. <laughs> in the bottle. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, seating is like, it's been announced how they're going to do pools. Yeah, okay, so, so, should... so yeah, actually about that, I don't know if this has like made its way all throughout the the, uh, the things, but um, but um, she did t just tell me that we're not going to go with that seating plan. Um, oh, it's uh, not going to be random <laughs> or what? Everything I knew was wrong. It's not going to be the randomized one, at least. Um, so this might be a little bit of like preview okay. information. Um, I remember she Hello? Yeah. We're getting you yeah, you're cutting out, but you're back. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I guess I was saying uh I don't think it's gonna be the complicated seating one anymore. I think we're just gonna seat it straight. 
So. Okay. Yeah. You may see that based on points or based on holistic judgment. I to be to be determined, but it used to be like some convoluted system of like the state representatives and then the non-state non yeah. the, the rest of the people. Was, get... I was so excited for that. It was like it was like draft pools from like the old StarCraft OGN days where they would get a guy, they would make him parade up no, there to uh, a speak speech and put put a name up on the board. That was hype. I, I really wanted to. See I'm that. not sure what you're referring to, but the idea with. The, the previous idea was randomized, and I think all we're saying is that um, it's not going to be random. That's all. Because then it could be like a Slot Zoso Mafia crush pool or something. Uh, that, that, would that would be impossible. Kind of that would be impossible under the system, but but yes. But it could oh, be okay. something close to that, and that would be bad. No, you need a group of death. Otherwise, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so over those. I'm actually kind of sad we won't be having a draft ceremony. There was, I don't think there was ever a draft involved, though, unfortunately. So. Would you just like drop it into the number generator? Is that the idea? What are we doing now? You know. Uh, I thought I think we're just doing straight seating, but I I don't know. Um, the, the the only the only thing I do know is that uh, we've we've heard a lot of people express resentment about the randomized part of the seating uh, algorithm. So I believe we will just not be randomly seating. That's that's all. So. Anyway. Well, we've only we had ER now, right? Yeah. <laughs> we've had a handy dandy ranking system. Smash oh my goodness. Are you trying to. Smash stats. Are you trying to subtly lead into a topic, Howard? Yeah, thank no. you, Vince. Wow, you picked up on that fast. Wow. Uh, so, this handy dandy website that just got relaunched after being yeah. on hiatus, um, hosted by the, the legendary Lawrence Luo. Uh, solely, um, de solely developed by. Yes. Solely developed um, by. I don't think he hosts it. At least not in his home PC or anything. Probably uses Heroku. He does. Or one of those trendy tech startup sites. Yeah, but our very New England's very own tonic, um, with an algorithm to test to actually say settle all these these who's better mm. than who fights. Who is Vortex? And why yeah, is he like close? <laughs> well, I have no idea, but I, w I will tell you that the uh, the current Smash stats is very like. Like the data is very long reaching, like it goes back quite a while. So you might see people in there who haven't showed up to anything in years. Like Dark. Yeah, so exactly. For those of us that don't know um, and haven't been under the rock, right. Avery, what is Smash Stats and why should we care? All right, let's, uh, yeah, so basically, um, I guess we should start with like Gar PR, right? Because like that's kind of really where this all started. Would you yeah. say? Oh my God, oh, Gar PR. Gar PR was so cool for like a few months. At I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it was actually amazing. So, so yeah, so rankings. So Gar PR was this great, like, great idea, which like, so okay, let's start with the fact that Super Smash Brothers Melee for the Nintendo GameCube has no online ranking system. We all know and love the CRTs that we have to lug around to be able to play this great game. Unfortunately, what that doesn't give us is any, like, automated way of recording people's matches, results. Um, so, you know, and we all do it by hand, and now, I mean, now there's, like, Chalonge and Bracket software, and that helps a lot, and that's great. But, you know, the players still come to us and say, I won, right? Like, and that's how we gather information in this new modern age. Now, Gar PR was like, uh, Gar, you know, bless his soul, was like, you know, I I want, huh? No, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, he was like, he, yeah, so he was like, well, you know what we could do is we could apply this, like, true skill ranking algorithm, which is based on the ELO system, which I'm sure Howard knows and loves. I mean, probably, you probably know more about the actual ranking algorithm than I do, but basically it's just like, you know, enter results, head-to-head, -head, uh, this person beat this person on this date, and magic, 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 numbers. What are those numbers? Your true skill ranking. Yay. Um, so that was Gar PR, but then uh, I guess like we realized it was very regionally biased and whatnot. So Tonic said, uh, hey, I'm going to do my own thing. So he started Smash Stats, mostly particularly for like the New England area, right? Like that's very biased towards um, information from, from uh, the Northeast. Um, but that was kind of our take on Gar PR. Um, so true skill, yeah. So, so long story, TLDR, it's a list of people telling you how good you are. Right. Um, oh, I guess I never said that. Less yeah, it's, it's really important. Why do some people hate it? Because uh, it tells them how bad they are. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. It's because there's a lot of, there's a lot of really, like, 
there's a lot of very influential people in the community who will say, but numbers can't tell the whole story, right? Qualitative information is not good enough. And we need a, uh, we need a panel of very like well-informed people to make qualitative, sorry, did I say qualitative before? I meant quantitative, right? Like quantitative, no, quantitative information isn't enough. We need qualitative what is information. Qualitative? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You need more qual because uh Mango Sandbag did every tournament except the one he won, so he's the best in the world. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean that's why they have it. <laughs> um so so I think the big problem with Smash Dots at this given moment that people have raised that I think holds a lot of merit is that a lot of the results are pretty old yeah. there right now because yeah. it hasn't been updated in a long time yeah. um, i think it went on hiatus for a while and so the standings are very influenced by um by results from over a year ago right like and long historical all, performance yeah. and any as anyone who's been in the scene knows people's relative skill levels have changed quite a lot in the last year mm -hmm. um people are hungry they're getting better people haven't been showing up they're getting worse uh so yeah, um, I think that there's been some call for like a refresh of the database and starting new. I mean, the way True Skill works though is that your most recent results do matter more because it's not, um, it's not like it looks against your head to head when you beat someone. All it does is compare the two people's current scores when they played right. a match, and then your score changes based on that. Right. So like so, an, like an Elo system, similar. To it that. is. Well, True Skill is better because it also stores your variants. So if you win and lose a lot, your rating can change even more. So, because it's not sure where you actually are. So if you're actually um, on a hot streak beating people, your rating will go up even faster because your variance will get bigger, mm. um, and you can gain more more points faster. Um, and so, resetting it, I don't think would necessarily uh, <laughs> help. Hmm. I mean, it might. So if we reset it. And then you happen to do really well at the first tournament, you'll be higher. So it'll allow more variance, which some people might want, but it really shouldn't. Old data doesn't actually like ruin the long term validity of the rankings, assuming everyone stays active. Right. And that's like a kind of a problem because like Dark has been to like three tournaments. Right. And he always beats everyone. So his location might be all right, but he has less data, so it's hard to say. Right. And the funny, the really funny thing is, like, people don't actually argue with Dark's placement on that, <laughs> despite only showing up to one tournament every two months yeah. that only one other guy. Can I mean, because who else can beat him, right? So, like, a PM tournament then just enters the melee side event because why not? And four stocks everyone. Yeah, win three dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually played Dark um, last Thursday. He's still oh. really good. Mm. That's my that's my story. Wow. At where? At Smashing Grounds. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting um, that you talk about a refresh of the data. I mean, I, I don't I'm not intimately familiar with the algorithm, but like it's it's definitely mostly um so, you know, and I've been talking with people about Lawrence and, you know, other people in the community about like what I would really like to see as kind of like an organizational person in the community, right? Like what would I like to see from this thing? And like I you know, I don't think this has really been solved by anyone in the world yet. Like how do I compare a player like Theo to a player from like random random PR ranking number twenty five in SoCal, yeah. right? Like, I have no idea what that means, right? Like, I mm -hmm. and if they both show up at a tournament and they're probably the best player, like probably the best players there, it's like okay, that's fine. But like, what if I'm seeding Shine, right? Like, yeah. right. And our only connection is going to be our results again. Like, the people who travel tend to be the region's top players. So our only connection might be our win rate against, like, Zoso or something. Right. And uh, we both probably have a significantly losing record to him, so what does that mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not very informative. Uh, so, other organizations... <laughs> I come from a chess background. Yeah, tell us about and, that. Uh, in particular, USCF and uh, the US Chess Federation and the um, FIDE, the International Chess Organization, they both have really simple systems for doing this. You get a number slapped on your name, right? Like it, it just follows you around everywhere. In in some sense, um, you, how good you are as a chess player is very much determined by your ranking, and it will determine which tournaments you're eligible for mm -hmm. based on your ranking, uh, based on your rating. 
And um, people generally believe in the, the, the point system there, um, in large part because it's really, really old, and in large part because it's just very well maintained and um, everyone agrees with it, and it's pretty good. Like, there are some problems over, like, globalized inflation and whatnot. But it's generally good. And in fact, true skill is in many ways considered a much better indicator of your skill than mm -hmm. ELO because ELO doesn't actually do the, the decay for old results kind of thing. Um, and I'm a firm believer in ranking people by their results and by their numbers and not by their perceived power. Right. Um, for a little bit of competitive gaming history, uh, the first ever power ranking was hosted on Team Liquid in 2006, I believe, um, by DJ Wheat. And it was just a, a little blurb, a little fun thing he posted about, this guy's good, this guy's really good, this guy's really, really good. For what and game? it was just like a little fun thing. Um, StarCraft Reborn. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was just like for fun. And um, it wasn't supposed to be this huge thing. And everyone who commented in that thread back then, if you go back into history, they're like, cool ranking. Um, that's probably wrong, but whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, that's what power ranks are in my head. It's like just... Um, but it's, it's fun to kind of describe people's potential and whatnot. But I think if you're going to seed tournaments based on that, um, it's going to be wrong. Optimal. If that's the best you have, that's the best you have. But if we can't have an algorithm or a number system for putting numbers on people, then we should do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's definitely something I would have strongly believe in, like, as an organizer kind of of the community. And, and sorry, were you about to say something, Bonk? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say I used to be on the, um, <gasps> like, you know, panel, I used to be on that kind of route, like uh, that kind of group. And then um, I think Judasai was the one that kind of convinced me over when, like, back when there was like this whole like, oh, the banner photo, we need to do something with the banner photo. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh my god. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was kind of like behind it because I like put a comment in one of the threads. Anyways, uh, yeah, I used to be on the, the panel side of it and I can kind of understand why we need a number system, but It'd be really, really rough at first, right? That's kind of the idea. How long do you think it would take to establish something like that? It's it would hard. take a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't need that much data, but you need data from everyone. Right. And that's hard. You probably need like five points, five right. tournaments from like every relevant player, and that's kind of hard to mandate. So a big problem, I think, a large portion of the resistance to smash that's. Um, <clears throat> was from that original banner photo where it was posted a little early when Zoso had like four data points and Mafia had like 35 because right. that's kind of real life um, <laughs> and um, Mafia was placed above Zoso at the time which everybody, literally everybody knew was wrong <laughs> but except for Smash Stats and, and so maybe was, Mafia no Mafia, Mafia said I remember this oh, comment Sorry, this comment, go. please leave me, please leave this up so I can be up of Dave for a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just, it was just comically wrong, right? Because of the limited data points. Um, and you're right, it's going to be very hard to get people to adopt yeah. it, uh, especially because Smashers are so resistant to change, right? Like, first mm. of all, we're still playing this 14-year-old game. Second of all, 15. Pokemon Stadium is still legal. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, anyways, um, it, it'll be hard to implement it, but I think if you can tie that to an incentive, like, yeah. maybe some tournaments will be only, uh, will be seated like this, or, like, try to smash GG, or maybe offer incentives, like, saying only people from the next brick circuit um, will have to be part of this kind of system. Uh, if you can tie it to that, then maybe, uh, it wouldn't be so hard to get people on yeah. board. Yeah, I'm definitely, like, trying to rack my brains for ways of... of kind of incentivizing and it's interesting like Howard a lot of the things you talk about in terms of your experiences with previous games like chess and like all these other things are definitely really you know I think could inform us a, uh, a lot right like and uh, so one thing about smash tournaments right now is that they're always open brackets right always open um, I mean there's like a couple summits and like those types of things but like you know what about like tournaments that like are open to this bracket of range of players or like this range of players and oh. I don't know something a chess does right that's, yeah but that's one of the cool things about uh fighting games is that we still do open entry tournaments which we I don't know how long that'll last for but it's like really cool even though it like never happens where someone enters their first tournament and wins I mean maybe it's happened once but um <laughs> it has like this nice feeling to it yeah. where it's like this giant open thing and everyone goes through the same gauntlet. 
Yeah, it's definitely very well, egalitarian, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's open tournaments in chess too, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's just that's not necessarily the standard. So, so one of my favorite formats that chess has that melee doesn't because it doesn't have a ranking system is called either quads or octads, um, mm -hmm. where you put either four or eight people into the same area. Say, hey, all you guys play all of you other guys, um, and like, let's be honest. Um, if this is your first tournament and you play not dot sad, you're probably not going to have. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. So. They're probably not going to win that, and they're probably yeah. not going to learn. Um, they're probably not going to learn that much, right? right? Like the skill difference is just going to be astronomically large, and that's just the way melee is. Um, and if you can, kind of, if you have a rating system going in, you can guarantee that they get more games that they can play, um, that where they can, you know, have a good experience, have a competitive, right. uh, competitive game. Like I would say that there's at any given tournament. Um, there's maybe about 10 to 15 people where both of us can win, assuming that we're nothing crazy happens, where both of us have a legitimate shot at winning set. And I would say there's probably like, let's say it's a 50 person tournament, uh, for where I, my personal skill level is right now, there's probably 30 people that I won't lose to, about 15 people that I might lose to or, or won't um, like go either way, and there's five people that I can't beat. Like let's say that's about the spread. Why should we waste time at, at every single tournament um, with these kind of matches where maybe both sides aren't going to get as much out of it as if they play someone closer to the skill level. Mm. And if we had a ranking system like that, I'm not saying this is for every tournament, by the way. We should right. still have the test of skill to determine who's going to be the best. But it could be possible with a, a, a good ranking system in place to say, um, hey, we're going to have these guys play each other for this small prize pool over here. We're going to have these guys play over here for this uh, small prize pool over here. And like, uh, and it will be it'll create a lot more little mini comp uh, competitions. And I think that would actually be yeah. good for helping people develop. So so I really like that idea in terms of like, again, like this is not replacing open brackets, right? Like, but in terms of like an, an, an additional value that you could get out of tournaments is like putting people in those pods. And I, I think of, of course, because <coughs> Howard, I and our, Howard and I are huge Shihai Afudu fans and whatnot, like a lot of, um, a lot of competitive uh, board games and card games and stuff have uh, class essentially systems and like obviously there's a lot of associated problems with that right like people in a specific band you know whatnot but um but it allows you to sort of like f identify this like band of people around say your skill level and then like your goal is to really to reach the next one and right now we don't have any kind of real i don't know like ranking tier or system like to be able to say we can do that so uh. I mean, Dan, you're um, very much from the kind of egalitarian era of Smash, if you will, where it's this is your first competitive game, right? Like where everyone can always enter. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on it? I, yeah, I think this is the first one that was like that. I played a lot of competitive games before this, although I did play Brawl, so I guess you could say that. But <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty. Anyways, um, sorry, could you could you tell me what like a group of five other people that are quote unquote around my skill level based upon like you know the numbers right it's all i think it's also really weird because like i i watch a lot of like local melees like I, i've been watching in area i've been like in practice stuff and i almost always try and find any sort of feasible time span that's gonna happen at all yeah. Like, yeah. i don't know if i was really like realistic about it i wouldn't say it's happening anytime soon hmm but um, I think it'd be really cool if like I could be in like a group of five other people that are quote unquote around my skill level based upon like you know the numbers. Right. It's all. I think it's also really weird because like I I watch a lot of like local melees. Like I, I've been watching in area. I've been like in bracket stuff, and I almost always try and find New England brackets when they happen, just so I can like just go through the results, see who upsets who, and kind of like formulate like tiers in my own like understanding mm. of it i guess so i can almost like put myself in those tiers and be like okay these are the people i want to make sure i don't lose to people are going to be all that other stuff but I, I think it'd be really cool if we had like a, like a separate crack for that hmm. yeah, i don't know i didn't really add much to the conversation so <laughs> no worries all right on that note let's segue into our last topic of the secret shine shop exclusive um, with uh, of the the combo contest that's coming up. Oh, um, Avery, would you like to talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, yeah, I could bring. Yeah, I could sort of tell you what we had in mind for that. Uh, I don't think it's a secret, <laughs> but it is definitely. Um, not anymore. It's not. No, it is. It's been in the shop. Um, but I will say, I think it's pretty new to Smash. Uh, now you've all, you know, you've all shared Giphy cats, and we all love those, you know, Giphy cat moments that happen on stream. And of course, there's nothing like seeing it live, right? Like being there for the Giphy cat is just, you know, something else, right? Um, so, you know, and, and I think, you know, sports and even other fighting games have tried this kind of in the past, so basically what I'm shamelessly ripping this off from is, um, when, uh, what was it, Red Bull Esports, actually, they did a big Street Fighter t Invitational, uh, over in France, and one of the side events was this, like, four-person, um, combo contest. So each player got a chance to go into practice mode, change all the settings that they wanted to, whatever they wanted, pick any characters they want, uh, and they get three tries, right? They get, to, they get to make the coolest combo that they could find in front of a, a panel of uh, the top eight, like, or top 16 or whatever, like four, four of the top 16 players at the tournament, right? Really cool concept, um, and, you know, I thought the crowd was really into it, so... Um, and then I think Melee and possibly, you know, other Smash games are lend themselves pretty well to this in a maybe a slightly different format. So, you know, I think the idea is to give people that opportunity to come on stage, try a cool Giphy Cat combo on a whatever CPU of their choice and, like, get it commentated or rated live by top players. I think it'd be really cool, so. I don't know what I would do in that. Mm. I think I all I could like chain grab is my long combo, and that's boring. Yeah, see, that's not gonna get you any <laughs> style points, Theo. This is about cool Giphy Cat combos. Not... Oh, I could just do anything with Falco. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you could pick Ganondorf and stomp them six times to the up. That would definitely win. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Did you say that it's like just alone, just you and a computer, or is it with someone else? Um, I'm gonna, th I, you know, I've been thinking about that. I think computer probably makes more sense. It's kind of like what it's designed for. But, like, obviously, we're talking about a panel of highly qualitative, uh, or, or people trying to judge you on a highly qualitative thing, right? Like, it's like, how cool is your combo? So, I don't know, I'm just telling you all out there who are preparing for this, like, don't bring me any six stairs to, to, to fair Ganon combos. Like, I don't want to see that shit. Like, I've seen that before. I just want to hear Leffen. Tell, tell people that their combos are bad and they should feel bad. Yeah. I think that would be good. <laughs> That'd be amazing. We or... did a Simon Cowell. Uh, and if we could get, like, oh, I, man, I want to talk to all these people and get them all in there. And, like, if we could get Bizarro on there and just, like, ha have him, like, work his biz magic on, like, uh, that'd be great. Biz uh, magic. Yeah. Sponsored by Youthbart, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm I'm uh, I'm telling you all now, so that you can go out there and practice um, your cool combos. Right? Like, uh, I think it should be fun. Sweet swag lined up for the winners, right? Yeah, I think that's the idea. It's it's uh, we'll announce prizes and stuff later. Obviously, I don't. This is all still kind of being formulated. Um, if you have ideas, please let me know. I'd love to hear them. You definitely okay. think about doing like team combos. Ooh. Oh, that would be sick. Oh. Yeah, that's something Melee has that. Oh, Street Fighter didn't have that. Uh, all right. Or even the crazy one on three. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that video, How to Yes as Many Times as Possible with Captain Falcon? What is it? <laughs> it's literally a guy who turns on like level one computers and goes with Falcon to do up B on them over and over again. Oh no. It's pretty much the How most- to combo your ears. <laughs> okay, I think that's just about it for our show. Um, I, does anyone have any shoutouts before they, uh, before we close it up? Shoutouts to shoutouts. Shoutouts to Shine. <laughs> I, I have one, actually. Shoutouts to Hentai69. Oh my for god. For being the best teammate yes. ever, and the future Shine uh, 2016 team's champion. <laughs> Uh, he was the one who literally, was it five minutes after it was announced? Probably not even. Like, within uh, maybe two minutes of the uh, Matt.Zeb up for grabs as your team partner, team's mate, um, <laughs> went up. Um, snatch that right up for a hundred big ones. Just quick snap that. And as someone who has teamed with Matt in my last tournament I was at, you are on for a wild ride, my friend. <laughs> Good luck. You never know which gumball you're gonna if you're gonna get the gumball or not. 
Yeah, that, that, that quote I actually asked Matt to provide. It was pretty, pretty, pretty hilarious. It's very accurate. Um, and so, so just as a, a little reference, in one of the games, we, we ended up winning this tournament, but in one of the games, he lost four stocks in 56 seconds. <laughs> That's on pace, on pace for uh, the fast, one of the fastest four stocks I've ever seen. Wow. I hope you didn't kill him too many times, Howard. Well, I didn't have to. Yeah. Got us to yet. <laughs> for making that 56 uh... seconds possible. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out for Bob Cushy being the Pikachu in the equation, back throwing Matt. Yo, and, good uh, stuff. Yeah. So mean, Bob. Why do you back throw spaces? <laughs> He's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> so cruel. When was the last time you played Pikachu and back throwing helpless spacey? Who you knew was gonna double jump? I don't know if I've ever done that. <laughs> you should give it a shot, dude. Okay, I, think I, really should, like I should it. give it a try before hating on it. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, play some Pikachu friendlies with DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, DJ. Oh. <laughs> nah, just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Read the double jump and then just like do a down air. <laughs> what if they do a good recovery? Well, then you. But they probably won't. Double jump right, man. Okay, they can't because they just got scared by Pikachu back throw. Wow. Wait, what? Because <laughs> they're like, gonna double jump eventually, and if they don't, yeah. they're gonna win OP. If they do an OP, you can cover it in like a million different ways. You got this, man. <laughs> Shout out to Axe for making people think Pikachu was a good character. <laughs> Top ten in melee. <laughs> Still true. <laughs> uh. All right, I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm not sure, like, I added so much to some of the discussion, but... <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. You guys were great. Um, we'll be here same time next week. See you then. Yeah, all right. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye.